Hi, I'm Connor Houghton. This is lecture 12 in the probability and combinatorics section of our unit Com Mathematics for Computer Science A. This lecture is about expected values. Uh, before we learned about random variables and uh, the thing that we got with random variables was this way of describing uh, events that allowed us to write down some of the probabilities that we might be interested in uh, easily. It was a useful and powerful notation. Uh, another advantage of uh, random variables is that when you do have a random variable you get the stuff that comes with real numbers. In other words, you're able to add things uh, and multiply them. And what we're going to learn about today, the expected value, well, that uh, is about that benefit. The fact that once you have uh, a random variable, once you're able to describe the output of an experiment in terms of, of real values, you can uh, do uh, arithmetic on, on those values. So the idea here is that g of x is just some function. Uh, in the cases we're going to look at today, g of x will be equal to x, or x squared, or x cubed, or something like that. And uh, g of big x, well, the idea there is that big x is a, is a map on outcomes, and so you go from an outcome uh, to x of the outcome, and then g uh, of that x, because the x, the x of the outcome, the map of the outcome, uh, will be a real number. We define the expected value of g of big of x, g of big x to be uh, the uh, mean of g of x weighted by the probability. So the x is here, the little x is, there are the outcomes, um, or there are the, um, there, there are the values of uh, the big x, so the values taken by the random variable. We're summing over the possible values, uh, the probability, uh, by uh, g of x. These angle brackets there, that's one of the uh, two common notations for the expected value. The other common notation is to use a big E, standing for expected value, or possibly originally for the German for expected value. So these are two notations for the, for the same thing. Um, the most common expected value is, is also sometimes called the expected value. So we have the expected value of g of x. Well, if the g of x is just x, so the expected value of x is just called the expected value, so it is the um, the sum over the possible values uh, by, by the value multiplied by the probability of that value. And um, the, if p of x is representing frequency, so before we uh, discussed uh, the possibility that p of x re represents frequencies, in other words, um, it represents the, the frequency with which a particular value would occur if you do the experiment. So you you're do the experiment multiple times, p of x is the fraction of those experiments that produce the value x. Uh, or it becomes the, that fraction as the number of, of trials goes to infinity. This seems like a sort of needless extra, extra complication, but obviously sometimes uh, you use probabilities that there are not representing the frequency. So for example, in computer science, you might be constructing models of some data, and so you'd have different probabilities uh, floating around. One probability is representing the data, another probability is representing some object that you've produced using your model that you're hoping to make uh, as close as possible uh, to the probabilities that represent the frequencies in the data. So it, it, it's a small, a small point, but uh, one that uh, we do need to uh, bear in mind at least uh, in the future. So anyway, uh, the P of X, uh, the probabilities, uh, are often used to represent frequencies. We often use probability to represent the outcomes of some um, process. And if p of x represents the frequencies, we often refer to the expected value as the mean, and we often use uh, the uh, Greek letter mu to represent the mean. Uh, here's another name for the same thing. It seems uh, silly to give so many names, but uh, the expected value of x, uh, this thing here, the angle bracket of x, is also sometimes called the first moment. That's part of a general sort of mathematical notation for thinking of things as moments. It's called the first moment because there's uh, no power. Um, it's a, or sorry, well, there is a power, but it's one. There's no <laughs> complicated power. So it's x to the one, it's the first power of x, and so we call it the first moment. So the first moment is the expected value of the first power of x. Here's a quick example. Uh, here's the probability distribution for flipping a coin uh, at three times and then counting the number of heads. So with the probability one eighth, you get zero. For the probability of, one, of three eighths, you get one. Probability of three eighths, you get two. Probability of an eighth, you get three. So this, the, here at x is a random variable. We have the set of outcomes, which looks like, you know, h, 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 t, h, t, t, blah, blah, blah. Uh, from the set of outcomes, we have a map to real numbers. Uh, that map is the map that maps the outcome uh, to the number of heads. And now um, we can ask, what's the expected value of that um, random variable, uh, angle brackets x. And so uh, it's, and 
again, you notice that you couldn't do arithmetic with the out, out outcome. So you can't do arithmetic where you're adding HHH to HHT and dividing by 2. But you can do arithmetic where you're multiplying 0 by an 8 and adding it to 1 by 3 eighths and so on. All this here is, is you know, this formula here, we're expanding out the sum. And when we do it, we get 3 over 2, which lies in the middle here, which you could have guessed because this whole thing is symmetric. And so that's the expected value of x for that probability distribution. And um, somehow uh, for the experiment of flipping the uh, coin three times and counting the number of heads, it's the average value that you'll get. And, and uh, here we're going to say the same thing. We're going to discuss the sample mean. So if we sample multiple times from the, from the sample space and we document the values we get for the, for the random variable uh, and, and, and the um, P of X is supposed to be modeling those frequencies, uh, then this thing here is the sample mean. It's the sum of the samples divided by the number of samples. And uh, in the uh, limit of, uh, of the number of samples going to infinity, this will approach uh, the expected value. That follows uh, from before from the idea that the uh, frequencies will approach uh, the probabilities. And so this happens as n goes to infinity. We're not going to talk that much about sampling uh, in this course, but there's always the um, the two things, there's the sort of platonic thing, the probabilistic, the mathematical description of the random process, and the uh, the more, um, the real thing, the outcome of experiments. And we uh, might be interested in how well this approximates that, or whether this is an unbiased or biased estimator of that. In fact, this is an unbiased estimator, uh, but this becomes an issue for uh, other objects. Uh, the, the, the same notation is used uh, more generally for the expected value. So, if you uh, sample uh, from the sa sample space, you get lots of values of the random variable, uh, and then you work out their, their average. So you sum them all up and divide by the number of samples. So you work out the average of what happens to them when you apply g to them. That should approach, uh, as the number of samples goes to infinity, that should approach the expected value of g of x. So 1 over n times the sum of g of xi, where the xi of the samples, are the, um, the values of the random variable if you do the experiment multiple times. Um, if you sum the uh, g of x i is up, and divide by the number of samples, uh, as the number of samples goes to infinity, that will approach uh, the expected value of g of x. But uh, as I said, there's a, there's a whole science of this we won't discuss, uh, which would note, for example, that this isn't always an unbiased estimator. In other words, um, although in, in infinity the two, one is equal to the other, we don't know that for finite n whether this will t the average of this thing over many resamplings will be equal to that thing. Uh, without going any further into that, we'll retreat uh, to looking at some more examples of the expected value. Uh, this is the variance. It's the expected value of x minus mu squared. So we take the x, we take away the mu here is representing the mean, the expected value of x. Uh, we square it and we work out the expected value of that. Uh, and uh, the variance is the square of another commonly used uh, quantity, which is the standard deviation. Again, the standard deviation is the terminology we use when, more specifically when p of x represents the frequencies. But the variance here is the expected value of this particular function of the random variable, x minus mu uh, squared. Uh, the uh, variance, as you, as you probably know, measures how spread out or compact um, a, a, a probability distribution is. So this is the probability distribution we looked at before, uh, the result of flipping a coin three times and counting the number of heads. It has expected value one and a half, which we just worked out. And if you do the calculation, you can easily see that the variance is 0 0.75. Now this distribution, uh, in fact, uh, it's symmetric, and you can easily check that it has the same expected value 1.5. You can also easily check that the variance is 0 0.5. In other words, it has a smaller variance than this distribution here. And you can see that the, um, that the distribution is more um, concentrated around, um, around the mean, around the, the 1.5 that is the mean, because we have seven sixteenths here. Here we only have three eighths, which is, corresponds to six sixteenths. Uh, here we have seven sixteenths. So this distribution is less spread out, and that's measured by the variance. So these um, expected values, often called, well, if applied to data, they're called uh, summary statistics. These quantities uh, describe, in an often useful way, a way that's um, good for deciding what's happening. They, you know, here we have four numbers. How do we summarize what's happening there and compare it to these four numbers? Well, rather than looking at the individual probabilities, it's nice to be able to say, well, they have the same mean, uh, but this one is less spread out than that one. 
and we can see that because the variance for that one is bigger than the variance for that one. So these expected values provide us, a, a way, provide us with ways of describing what's happening in the probability distributions. Uh, here's some more names. Uh, the expected value of x squared uh, is called the second moment. Obviously, following from what I said before, it's the expected value of the second power of x. But the variance isn't the expected value of x squared. It's the expected value of x minus uh, the mean squared. And for that reason, it's called the second central moment. The central is referring to the fact that you take away uh, the mean. Um, and so the variance is the second central moment. There are other uh, moments that are sometimes used in describing probability distributions. The skewness, for example, it's a measure of how symmetric a probability distribution is. And it's, uh, well, it's a rescaled version of the third central moment. It's actually sometimes called the standardized third central moment. You divide by the, um, by the variance. That just makes it easier to compare uh, the, the skewness of distributions that have different variances. You sort of scale out the variance. And the kurtosis uh, is basically the, um, the fourth standardized central moment. It's, it's the fourth moment. The kurtosis uh, for um, distributions with the same, uh, same variance, the same degree of um, compactness, you can have uh, have uh, ones with heavy tails or ones with very light tails, and that uh, balance is measured by the kurtosis. We're not going to talk any further about these um, these measures, these um, uh, these moments uh, for now, but they are often used in describing probability distributions. Uh, pro uh, the uh, expected values are returning basically to the properties of expected values. They have nice properties that really follow from the fact that the expected value is just some sum. So if we go right back to the start, um, the expected value is just the sum of uh, g of x multiplied by p of x. And, and sums, uh, they're linear, they have nice uh, behavior, and those nice behaviors, the nice behavior of summing basically, uh, the nice linear behavior of summing gives the expected value nice properties. So the first one is, uh, we imagine c as a constant, the expected value of c times uh, g of x, well, uh, that's just the sum over x of c, g of x, p of x, the c is just a constant, it comes outside the sum, and so this is just uh, the expected value of g of x. In other words, this c inside the expected value, if it's a constant, can come out of the expected value. Uh, another sort of simple one is that the expected value of 1 is just 1. Uh, that's because the expected value of 1 is just the sum of the probabilities, and by definition the, the probability is sum to 1. And the third is that, uh, that uh, uh, the expected value is, is, uh, is uh, additive. So the expected value of g1 of x plus g2 of x, well, that's the sum of g1 of little x plus g2 of little x by p of x, uh, and then obviously sums are, uh, you're able to split them across uh, terms, so that's uh, the sum of you know, g1 of x p of x plus the sum of g2 of p of x, which is just the expected value of g1 of x plus the expected value of g2 of x. So the expected value has nice properties. Uh, that um, straightforwardly gives us another uh, formula for the variance, which is often useful. So v of x, as we said, was the expected value of x minus mu squared. You can square out that thing or multiply out that thing. So expect, expected value of x squared minus 2 mu x plus mu squared. And then using the additiveness, that's the expected value of x squared, the second moment, minus 2 mu by uh, the expected value of x, the first mo moment, plus the expected value of mu squared. So the expected value of mu squared, we can take the mu squared out the front, expected value of 1, expected value of 1 is 1. So that just gives us a mu squared, um, uh, gives us a plus mu squared. Uh, here it's minus 2 mu, because the mu comes out of the expected value bracket. Uh, and then we get x, the expected value of x is again just mu, uh, we note that here. And so we get minus 2 mu, so we have a plus mu squared here, we have minus 2 mu squared there. And so we get the expected value of x is equal to the second moment minus mu squared. And as I said, that's often a, a nice uh, formula when you're playing around with variances. But I mean more importantly this uh, example gives you the idea, idea that when you're dealing with uh, moments or expected values you can do uh, lots of algebra and the expected value brackets uh, are, are nice with respect to that algebra in the sense that constants can come out and so, uh, sums can be split. It's, it's linear. Um, it's, a, it's a linear operation in that sense. Thank you.